Okay, so um, so we get these oscillatory solutions that are inside the uh, inside the potential well, the finite potential well, and um, it's important to remember that since we've already um, separated the time and space parts, since we were able to do that, as indicated by the fact that we we're actually writing the time independent Schrodinger equation up there. Um, then these solutions will be standing waves. So this defines kind of the amplitude of the motion. And then if when we turn on time, those uh, that that uh, this um, uh, this wave pattern will just oscillate in time, but it's not going to travel. Okay. So uh, and it's also important a, a critical difference between the finite and the infinite potential well is that here. Um, the potential at zero and at L, okay, at the, at the edges of the box, is not infinity, is not infinite, as it was in the infinite potential well. And in the infinite potential well, due to these boundary conditions, we were able to uh, say that the wave function had to be zero at the edges of the box. Here, since the potential is not infinity, is not infinite. We can't do that, okay? And so remember, in the infinite potential, well, we were able to eliminate one of our uh, one of our constants. In fact, we we're able to immigrate uh, to uh, to um, get rid of B because of that uh, boundary condition. Here, A and B are both non-zero, okay? We can't do that, and we can't actually say anything about A and B yet until we look at how the wave function behaves. Uh, for x minus than uh, x less than zero and x greater than l, okay, and then we're going to basically have to use the continuity of the wave function and its derivative to find um, the constants a and b and any other constants which which we're going to see arise right now, okay. So in region two, which we define to be uh, to the left of to the uh, left of the left wall, so it's uh, um, outside of the potential well uh, x x less than zero. Um, then we have the potential is equal to u sub zero there, and the energy we're we're considering the bound state solutions, okay? And so we're as I showed as I drew on the first view graph, the energy of the particle we're, we're basically considering to be less than than you than uh, the potential um, height, okay? And so e is less than you know this corresponds to bound states, okay? And so we or the potential for bound states. And so we are going to. Uh, this means that when we when we have the um, time independent Schrodinger equation here, as we've rewritten it, then then e is going to be less than u naught, and so this term is going to be positive now, whereas before inside the well it's negative, now it's going to be positive. We're going to expect exponential uh, functions, and we basically to help us out again we set this. Um, we set this term 2m over h bar squared u naught minus e to be equal to alpha squared. Okay, we just make that assignment. It just helps us so we don't have to rewrite this all the time. Okay, and therefore the solutions uh, in uh, in the uh, outside of the box when x is less than zero uh, are equal to uh, an integration constant c times e to the plus alpha x plus an integration constant d uh, times e to the minus alpha x. Okay, now physically speaking, okay, uh, as x becomes more negative, so as we go outside the box further and further to the left, okay, x becomes more and more negative, then we can't have the um, the wave function diverge there. That is, we can't have it trending towards infinity because if that were the case, then when we try to normalize this wave function, that is, if we where we try to integrate over all space, we would never be able to get a, a, an integral with a finite value, which basically means that we would not be able to. Um, uh, basically, it would say that we we have no way of knowing where the particle is, um, that it's not necessarily anywhere. Okay, and so that's not physical. That's not physical. So we require that, it, that the wave function is normalizable and so we basically can't have a solution that keeps getting bigger as we go uh, to larger and larger values of negative x. Okay, and that basically says that we um, that we eliminate d, that d goes to zero and so we're left with this wave function right here. Psi of x is equal to c e to the plus alpha x and since x is negative then this is going to give us a exponentially decaying solution.